I thought I'd take a small video. Um, several people asked to see pictures and even a video of my i3 that I've built. Uh, this is the Prusa i3. Um, I'm in the middle of putting the uh, finishing touches on it. Um, where you see I have the uh, from around here x-axis working properly I have the x home works hits the little end stop switch it's on the smooth rod got the wires all nice and cable wrapped um, do the uh, Z next See, hums along nicely. Um, I'll be a little slow, um, but as you can see, it's working well. And I just use these little teeny tiny uh, end stop switches that just zip tie to a little clamp on the rod. Um, they're stiff enough that the button presses don't move them, but they're loose enough that I can adjust by hand very easily. So it works out pretty well. You can watch it almost go down. And I haven't calibrated anything, I haven't done any test prints or anything. I've just been testing the axes and whatnot. So, and it's done. And uh, we can go down a little bit further, obviously. I've got the Prusa nozzle on here, um, which, by all reports, uh, unless you're printing the really high temperature material, um, you need a cooling fan on the cold zone. Um, it's just nice to have anyway. A lot of other hot ends benefit from it. So I've kind of rigged up this cooling fan here. Um, it's a bl uh, squirrel cage blower style fan that blows directly on the uh, uh, cold zone. Um, it doesn't leave me a lot of room to put a, like an actual workpiece cooling fan that I want to put. I'm trying to still figure out how to get something that fits in there nicely so I can have a fan cooling the part as well. Um, and the typical Prusa design, of course, has got the the uh, the Y and the X and Z come apart and can lay flat into two pieces. The only thing holding this thing together, you know, are the two bolts down here on each side. Um, then I took it one step further um, and did the electronics as a third separate, completely isolated piece. Uh, I haven't cleaned up the wiring yet; it's a little bit of a rat's nest. But I took the power supply, I put uh, standoffs on it mounted the Rambo on top, uh, put a nice little, you know, terminal block cover that's got an actual main socket connector, um, and that goes out to, uh, 24 volts comes out here, and I actually have, see if I can go around here with the camera, I actually have it coming to these, this other connector, um, this is an XT60 connector, uh, can handle 60 amps of power, and the reason I have the second connector here is because I can put something in line in between the entire uh, um, DC uh, power. Um, and I have a, a, this little thing I use for gauging how much RC or how much uh, current draw like RC vehicles use um, that takes those XT60 connectors. So I can plug that in line and actually measure the real time current usage uh, and other miscellaneous crap. Um, for the i3. I just thought I'd put there, you know, I'm already doing all this work. Um, yeah, it's kind of, this was more out of necessity. Um, Rambo doesn't fit on the i3. So if you can see, there's these mounting holes here. This is for a ramps style board that will fit perfectly right here and will not interfere with the axis of the motor or anything like that. And then all the wires come off there. Well, take a look at the ramps board. It's fat and wide. It's not gonna fit there. And I've seen weird people where they mount them like this, and I didn't want to do any of that crap. So I kind of made this nice self contain I can just unplug the connections to it um, and pack it all up together nicely. Uh, so that's kind of the, the goal behind it. It's almost complete. Like I said, I'm just putting any of the finishing touches on, and uh, I'll get a good front view of it here. You can see. So, anyway. That is my Prusa i3. Oh, and one little fun thing. It's signed by the man himself. Thanks.